In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up your table of contents and the Captivate Play Bar. So for some of you, this might be a very basic video, but of course, uh, not everyone is an experienced Captivate user. Some of you are brand new. So I wanted to cover this particular topic and make sure everyone was sort of on the same page here. So when you're building an Adobe Captivate project like this, uh, you can decide whether you're going to provide your own navigation controls as this project has here. It's got a start button, but there are other slides as well where maybe we don't want to mess it up with a bunch of buttons here. So what you can do is you can go into your table of contents and play bar settings, which is located down. It's the second last icon on the right hand toolbar here called TOC and play bar. And if you open that up, you can see the TOC and play bar window. Pretty straightforward. You simply turn on the elements that you wish to have. You can hide slides. Let me show you here. So first of all, with the table of contents, we can turn on the table of contents and it will show up on the right hand side of your slide. It can be hidden. The learners can turn it off so it doesn't interfere with the content that you've already placed on your slide. And you can do things like hide certain elements or hide different slides from the TOC. So for example, uh, you might want to hide uh, slides that are optional like glossary slides or table of content slides that are separate from this TOC. If you decide you want to group this into uh, different categories, you can click on add new group and this creates a folder that you can now grab any slide and place it in this particular group. If I open that up, you'll see that that slide's been added to the group. And, you know, I can give this particular group a name like Lesson 1. And I can continue to drag these slides into that particular uh, group there. And, of course, we can select any slides that we wish and move them down within the group so that, it, you know, makes logical sense and all that there. And of course, that will show up as a collapsible hierarchy within the table of contents. You can also create new groups by selecting a slide and indenting it, and that automatically puts that within a group. So we could call this one, for example, lesson two, and we can continue to add other slides to that particular group and and build a whole structure of our course that may not have been there uh, as well. You can also remove slides directly from this table of contents view. So you might not want to show, for example, knowledge checks within the table of contents. So you can click on the, uh, the eyeball icon here to hide those. And of course, they won't show up in the actual hierarchy of your table of contents there. That's useful if you've got, you know, summary slides at the end of a lesson or knowledge checks, etc. If at any time you've decided you've totally messed up your table of contents, you do have this restore default order. And this will take away any of the folders and put everything back into the correct order uh, as you originally found it. And of course, you can start over at that point. Let's turn off the table of contents for now and go over to the play bar settings. Now, this is something that I find that there are two kinds of Captivate developers. There are the Captivate developers who build slides that include navigation. They've decided what they want to provide the learner as far as navigation controls, and they take care of that themselves. So for those folks, they're probably simply going to want to turn off the entire play bar. So all the learner sees is the controls that they're providing. And this gives you a great amount of control. This is also useful if you have scenario based training or some other non-linear type training where, you know, clicking on one option will take them, you know, 10 slides ahead and clicking on a back option will take them 10 slides back. And it's all over the place. It's a full branching scenario, in which case you probably don't want to show a play bar at all because, of course, 
Play bars are only for linear courses that start at slide one and move to slide two and so on. So, but you can customize the play bar even if you are building just a standard linear course. So if you wish to give them, um, give your learners a play bar, you can do certain things. Like for example, you can hide the play bar in the quiz. This would prevent learners from going back and simply finding the answers to questions. Um, you know, there's some debate whether there's value in that or not. But, you know, if you want them to have truly, you know, a, a chance to recall what they just learned, you can hide the play bar in the quiz and force them to answer that the questions based just on their memories. You can also decide to show tool tips or not. The reason you might not want to show tool tips, and that's when you hover your mouse over these individual buttons and it tells you this is play, this is pause, this is next slide, this is backslide, and so on. If you're designing a course that isn't going to be in the default language of whatever version of Captivate you're running, you might want to turn this off so that learners won't see another language besides their primary language. So that's just a matter of clicking on that toggle switch there. And these are all the controls. So if you are going to do a combination where perhaps you've got, uh, you don't want to show a play button and you don't want to show a next button, you can turn those individual items off or on as you see fit. Uh, if you're not planning on having any audio narration, you could turn off the mute button, things like that, and really customize the play bar to just your needs. Uh, obviously, if you're not going to use a table of contents, you could turn that off and keep a very simple play bar here. I've done a very simple play bar here. Let's close this out now, and let's just do a quick preview of this project. So here we are, as you can see, we have a very simple play bar here. We can go back to the previous slide. Uh, no forward button, no play button, whatever. The nice thing about the play bar in Adobe Captivate 12 is that your learners can collapse it down to a single icon. And the other thing they can do, if it's interfering with things like closed captions or other controls on the slide, learners can move that play bar to any of the positions around the screen that's available to them. So this is useful if you wanna keep the play bar out of controls. And you might wanna include instructions at the beginning of your course on how the learners can do that. But otherwise, the standard controls are all there and learners, of course, can use this to fully navigate the course. This is just a preview, so you won't see the different preview screen types here in an actual published course but learners will, do, of course, see these controls on a mobile device, a tablet, a smartphone, whatever. If you thought this video was helpful, please like and share it with your colleagues. If you need help with Adobe Captivate, hire Paul for one-on-one -on -one instruction. Paul's goal is to focus on lessons based on your specific needs. Visit his website at CaptivateTeacher.com. And don't forget to subscribe to his YouTube channel.